joining us. Um, my name is Casper Bartington. I'm the head of volunteer and education engagement at APM. I'm really pleased to be joined today by Catherine Jones, who's Group Project Director of Capability at Babcock International Group. Catherine's also a chartered project professional and a fellow of APM. So very much bought into the Association for Project Management. Thank you for that. Um, what we're going to do over the course of the next 35 minutes or so um, is deliver some content for you, uh, primarily around the Babcock International Group Project Management Graduate Scheme. Uh, I will also talk a little bit about some of the ways that APM can support people about to enter the profession and also while they're on that journey. So the running order will be me um, giving a tiny intro about APM, playing a short video about what project management is for those of you who are really fresh um, to our profession. I'll then pass over to Catherine, who's going to walk you through Babcock and the graduate scheme. Catherine's going to then hand over to one of her ex graduates, Gemma, who will walk you through her journey and experiences. We'll break for some questions at that point. Uh, and I'm sure you'll have plenty. Then we will move on to some of the support that APM can provide. Um, we'll then wrap up uh, with a final Q&A and um, a final video which features some of Babcock's uh, early careers professionals. So I am going to have that moment of truth uh, and see if my screen shares properly. Hopefully it will uh, and we can make a start. So I hope that this is the session that you are coming along for. Um, you're most welcome to join us. So first of all, before I hand over to the video and then Catherine, a couple of words about APM. For those of you who aren't too sure about who we are, you can see that's what we stand for. We're Association for Project Management. We're the only chartered body for the project profession in the world. Um, you can read so you can see how many members we've got. Um, our members are primarily in the UK, but we do have APM members in over 100 countries around the world as well. And we also hold relationships with companies like Babcock and organisations like Babcock so that um, we're helping people grow their knowledge uh, as well as their networks. And it's those two key words that I think are at the heart of what we as professional bodies do. So mm -hmm. I'm now going to show you uh, a short video, uh, an animation about what project management is. If you're a senior project professional, go and make a cup of tea. Um, if you are new to the profession, then have a watch um, and then I'll, I'll introduce you to Catherine. Everywhere you look, projects are underway. Whether you're recruiting a new member of staff or constructing the world's tallest building, every project needs a manager to ensure its success. Someone with their eye on every detail, at every stage, from inception to completion. Put simply, project management is about getting things done. It's about knowing exactly what you want to achieve, how are you going to achieve it, and how long it will take. It's about ensuring that everyone involved shares and understands those aims before the first steps are taken and that they continue to, as the end of the project, whatever it is, draws closer. Because successful projects don't just happen. They're not just a long list of jobs to be done. They're a masterpiece of planning, management, organization and communication, a carefully choreographed sequence of events where progress is smooth and steady one step leads seamlessly to the next and every possible hitch has been considered and counted. A successful project needs people with the right skills and knowledge at its heart. Working together, a well-managed, motivated team with clear roles, responsibilities and reporting lines will carry a project to its conclusion without compromising on time, cost or quality. Project management is a wonderful thing but it's easy to forget how the world might look without it. Because at its best, project management is virtually invisible. It's the absence of problems and the prevention of failure. But behind every successful project, whether it's changing the way a company works or the organization of an important event, there's an unsung hero, the project manager, who kept everything and everyone on track to ensure the delivery of the desired result. At APM, we support project managers in all the amazing work they do every day. If you'd like to know more about project management, visit us at apm.org.uk slash whatispm.
OK, so um, that's a bit about project management. That's a bit about APM. Now I'm delighted to hand over to Catherine to tell you a lot about Babcock. So Catherine, over to you. Thank you, Casper, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's really great to be able to um, speak to you over this webinar today. As Casper says, I'm Catherine Jones. I'm Group Project Director for um, Capability within, within Babcock. So who are Babcock? Um, we're an international defence company and our purpose is to create a safe and secure world together. We work across a number of growing sectors, land, nuclear, aviation and marine, and we operate worldwide, including in the UK, Australasia, Canada, France, South Africa, to name a few. We're a FTSE 250 company with about 28,000 employees. But what are the types of projects and things that we deliver? I've got a short video to show you next. It tells you a little bit more about what Babcock does. If those have just joined, don't mind just going on to um, onto mute. That would just help everyone hear the video. Thank you. Thank you, Casper. Can you still hear me, Casper? Just check. Loud and clear. Thanks, Catherine. Thank you. So what you saw in that video was the breadth of our portfolio. You can see it's really wide and varied. We have a wealth of complex projects that we deliver for our customers, and we draw on some of the top project professionals in the UK to help us do that. And we're hoping that one day you can be part of our project management team. At Babcock, our project managers are responsible for the day-to-day -day management of our projects, ensuring safety at all times, managing that scope, helping to pull the schedule together, making sure that the project team deliver on time to the right cost and the budget, and understanding and mitigating all the risks and ensuring the quality of the project, so that we meet our customers' expectations and requirements of the contract or of our business case. Projects are delivered by people and for people. So if you were to join us, your role as a project manager in Babcock would be pivotal in leading the team. It's about ensuring they understand the overall vision of the project, 
and that they understand that schedule and that budget and that you get the team to collaborate and work together to bring them together as an integrated project team so that they can successfully deliver. During your career in Babcock, you have the opportunity to work under, on a, a variety of projects across the different sectors that you saw in our video and are shown on the screen here. It could be in our marine sector, where you'll work on um, new build and complex ship programmes or may help in maintaining existing ships. Or work with our um, the design and deliver of marine technology solutions in intelligence, surveillance and communication equipment. These are projects that we have to bring to life in Babcock. It could be in our land sector where we ensure the British Army, the police, the fire service can get on their missions for sa safely. We provide fleet maintenance, vehicles and equipment. Or also within land, we have a rail business where we deliver complex programme management for critical rail infrastructure, signalling and track renewal schemes. In our aviation business, we save lives with the aerial emergency medical and search and rescue services and we support defensive nations for air forces in the UK. Again, with maintenance of, of the assets, training and infrastructure that they need to operate. And last but not least, you might join our nuclear business, where we deliver projects to sustain the entirety of the UK submarine fleet. From just short maintenance repairs for the submarines or big overhaul um, mega projects and programmes to upgrade to the submarines or even new build. We run them from two major dockyards in the UK, one in Plymouth and the other up, um, in, in Scotland. In our civil nuclear business, we take a leading um, role within under our Cavendish nuclear brand for nuclear new build, operations and decommissioning. You can see our projects are exciting, they're fast paced and they're critical to help create that safe and secure world together. By joining our project management graduate scheme, you can be a part of this. Should we go to the next slide, um, Casper, and find out a little bit about the scheme? So it's a two year development programme scheme. And through that, you'll be, we'll be looking to help increase and build your project experience. But you'll also be gaining recognised APM qualifications. Through the placements that we run on the scheme, you'll be able to work on some of the projects that I've talked about. And they are they will all be at different stages of that life cycle. So you might join a project team where they're in project startup, looking at the original initial planning of how to bring the project together. It might be that they're in the de design stages and you're working with the teams of engineers and safety and commissioning to help design the solution. Or it might be that you, you join it when it's in its construction period or production or in that commissioning and handover. We have projects that cover the whole life cycle and at different stages, and they cover across all of those sectors that I've talked about. So you'll get that project experience as part of our graduate scheme. But we're also looking to develop you in your leadership and softer skills through our group wide graduate programme. But we also encourage you to participate in other activities outside of Babcock, working with schools and colleges, for example, on our STEM science, technology, engineering and maths um, campaigns. Or we encourage you to do activities like the APM challenge and bring a team together to solve um, a scenario problem and, and compete against other project managers across, um, across APM. As part of the scheme, we will give you dedicated mentoring from some of the top project management professionals in Babcock. But we'll also provide you a buddy who's one of our current graduates who are um, on the scheme now and they will help you in those first couple of weeks and months as you as you join Babcock just to understand that day to day how things work and, and, and how to um, how to be a part of Babcock and, and, and how things operate. So at all, all levels you're supported. Our scheme is really attractive and it all starts with a starting salary of £31,000. So whereabouts could some of those projects be? Should we go to the next slide, Casper? Each of our placements is six months in duration and there are opportunities to work at many of our sites in the UK, some of which are just shown here. There are also a small number of international opportunities as well. And at the end of the two years, you'll be able to start in a full time substantive role as an assistant project manager based at one of these sites. 
So let's find out a little bit about how you can join. Applications are open now. So you can see the link there on the screen for you to apply. And our entry requirement is a degree, but let me bust one of the first myths. It doesn't have to be an engineering degree. We, although as Babcock, we have a strong engineering and technology background, you don't have to have a degree in it to be able to run our projects. Because as I've already talked about, we're looking for your skills in managing um, to time, cost and quality. And we're looking for our project managers to have the right skills and behaviours, and we can train them in the technical aspects of project management and give them the experience that they need. So what we're really looking for is people with the right behaviours and the right foundations and some skills. Let me explain a bit more about that. As a project manager, you need to be proactive, curious, with a strong emotional intelligence, adaptive, resilient, with a positive attitude to take on each challenge as it comes along. We want to build on some of the, skill, the skills that you probably already have from your experiences in life to date. We're looking for graduates with leadership experience, those who are able to eff effectively communicate, someone who can plan and organise as well as interpretate and communicate data effectively. So that's just a little bit about what we're looking for. And in terms of how do you apply? Well, go to the, go to the link on the screen. And we ask you to submit a CV and fill in an application form. There's then a couple of phases in terms of the application um, process. We have an online assessment. And then if you're successful getting through that stage, we have we run a number of assessment centres. These are done virtually. But during that virtual assessment centre, we'll be looking at um, one to one interviews, presentations and a group exercise. And what we're trying to do is explore your potential, see if you have some of those skills and behaviours that we're looking for and that we can really build on to help you start your career in project management at Babcock. But just to say, we understand the importance of um, diversity and inclusion in the workforce, and it is reflected in the way our recruitment and selection process runs. Um, so I say those assessment centres are really about exploring your potential. Hopefully you can see um, it's a really exciting and enriching scheme. So what I would just say is apply early. Places do go quickly and we will have to close applications once we fill all of our slots. And this is open to everyone uh, to apply. So we, are, we, we do see large numbers come through. But let's go to the next slide, please, Casper. And let's talk about um, in Babcock, uh, Babcock already, you know, it's not just about our graduates. We're always we're looking to develop all of our project professionals. Um, and at every stage of your career, including the first two years of the project management graduate scheme, we'll be supporting you in your continued professional development. And this Venn diagram that I show on the screen here just talks about how we'll do that in three key areas. And what we want to do is keep you at the centre of that Venn diagram. So you're always progressing in these three aspects. The first absolutely is delivery experience. Get out there, get into the projects, get among the amongst the, the nitty gritty and the detail, get your 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 steel toe caps on and, and, and see it live um, for, for, you know, being created in front of you and be a part of that. Get that delivery experience, but also build your technical knowledge and your qualifications. And as I said, as part of the graduate scheme, we, we go through the, the PMQ qualification and the PFQ. But also as a project manager, you want to be continue honing and shaping your leadership skills, your behaviours, your attitude, how you face all of those challenges. And that's what we're about in our scheme, about supporting you both in the graduate scheme and further on. How do we do it? We follow a model of 70-20-10. So 70% is on the job experience, working as a project professional on the delivery of our projects. As you grow your career, that will be of increasing complexity. And you will be taking accountability for the key aspects and delivery of that project. And applying that experience and the project management competencies that you, you build in your career. We ask you to continually to assess where you're at and understand what at each level where you need to be. And maybe if there's any gaps, what you need to do to fill um, to address them. And you'll work with your line manager to write personal development plans and put those plans in action so that you're continuing to progress all of those areas of that, that knowledge and that experience. 
20% of your learning should be through coaching and mentoring, some of which I've talked about already. Or it could be through joining communities of practice that we run or through um, learning and reading some of the content that we have on our project management framework. 10% is at classroom training. We have a really comprehensive training framework, which includes industry recognised qualifications, including APM ones, as well as Babcock Pacific training. As part of your development, we want to set you up on your journey towards also becoming a chartered project professional. So let me just give you a quick snapshot on the next slide of just some of the resources we have. This is just a snapshot of our career and training framework. All of our project professionals in Babcock are brought together under the project management function, which is a team that I'm a part of. We're the home for project management within Babcock. And my role, our role within our team is to grow as a professional management, professional project management capability within Babcock so that our people are enabled with the right skills, tools and those resources such as a project management delivery framework to work consistently across all of our projects in Babcock to be able to manage change and to deliver those predictable and successful outcomes for our customers. So this slide just shows you some of the resources that we use to help our project professionals map their comp continued professional development in career pathways, in understanding their technical competences, and that broadens out for, into other disciplines such as project controls as well, scheduling, risk, cost, but also in that learning development, that training framework that, that I talked about. If we go to the next slide. I'll just say, um, just want to reiterate our commitment to diversity and inclusion. At Babcock, we really are committed to being an inclusive employer. We encourage everyone to bring their whole self to work and we try to provide our best support um, to them. And we have a number of growing networks, some of them you can see on the screen. Inclusion is an enabler and it's right um, and it's about creating the right foundations to attract and retain the best and most diverse talent in Babcock that will help us be even more successful. We do set ourselves targets, aspirations of where we need to get to as a business and what we're looking to do. And for us in Babcock, an example of one of them would be that um, from a gender equality point of view, we want to see 30 percent of women in senior leadership roles by 2025, just in two years time, two, three years time. And we want to see actually 30 percent of female representation at all levels across the organisation in 2030. Babcock is in it is in the defence sector, so these are stretch targets for us, but we're absolutely committed to trying to, to get there. Anyway, that's a bit about Babcock, and now I'm really delighted to actually introduce you to Gemma, who's been through our project management graduate scheme and is now working in our submarine business as a project manager, and she's going to tell you about life in Babcock from her side. Gemma. Many thanks. Catherine and Casper um, for introducing the scheme and a little bit about Babcock and um, many thanks everyone for having me here today. Uh, my name is Gemma Haddon and I currently am a project planning manager in a submarine business unit um, based in our Plymouth area um, of Devonport. Um, but before I get into how I've got to where I am now, I thought I'd give you an introduction in, into my career um, to date. Um, so before joining Babcock and starting on the um, project management scheme, I actually did a degree in genetics at Cardiff University, um, which included uh, a whole year working in a cancer research lab. Um, and I really enjoyed my degree, although I came out of it thinking I, I don't think that's what I want to do for my career and was wondering sort of where to go next. The parts of my degree and placement year I really enjoyed was that project side. So being able to, to manage a project, time management, all those things were the things that I enjoyed about my degree and I came out not, not knowing where to go next. Previously, I have believed, and Catherine mentioned about these sort of myths, that Babcock and, and defence areas were mainly focused on that sort of engineering degree and, and that's, not, that's not needed. I applied with my genetics degree um, and was successful getting into um, Babcock's Devonport project management scheme in 2018. I then started on my two year graduate scheme undertaking a variety of placements. So the placements I did were around six months long, looking at many different areas. So working on places like submarines, warships, getting to go on board, um, working with many different stakeholders in areas such as operations, like I said, submarines and warships, or strategic. So looking at how the business operates and how what is done at strategic level impacts those projects at the operational level. 
looking at commercial and finance and working in placements like that to build those competencies and all while building my soft set of competencies as well, getting experience in presenting, talking to stakeholders and presenting on, on things like this now. So although placements form the bulk of your graduate scheme, there are many other opportunities you get as well during the scheme. So I was actually um, fortunate enough to take part in the APM challenge for the Southwest branch. I was the project manager for the winning team on the APM challenge. So you can see us in that picture there. As part of the challenge, you're asked to get hold of a local charity and undertake a project for them. So you get the opportunity to develop that project and implement that project. We worked with Help for Heroes, particularly their Plymouth branch. Well, they reached out to us because they were struggling with a lot of their sort of governance. So how they structured their meetings, how they structured their um, team and what they were finding is the veterans were it was affecting the veterans because they weren't sure where they were going or how they were being managed. We took that and we took the requirements and formed a project. And from that, we put in place some really basic things that are really important. So meeting agendas, we put in place a clear team structure and organisation. And what we saw from that was actually a culture change. And um, the company and the Help for Heroes charity saw that they were able to support the veterans through that. So that was one of the highlights of my graduate schemes, undertaking that APM challenge and, and winning was really the, the sort of highlight at the end of that. So that was excellent. Throughout the graduate scheme, as Catherine mentioned, we got qualifications as well. So I undertook and was successful in both the project fundamentals qualification and project management qualification. Another opportunity I took part in during those two years was actually doing some mentoring with Plymouth University. So I helped establish and set up a Babcock specific mentoring scheme with Plymouth University. And this meant that Plymouth University students had access to a Babcock mentor and I was a mentor myself. So it's fantastic being able to come into the company and then to mentor students and like give back some learning about how I got into my role and, and started on the graduate scheme. It also meant that these students would come and visit Babcock, um, Devonport and, and see it in real time and get to speak to some um, professionals as well. So that was really excellent. So as you can see, across those two years, I got involved in an awful lot. Um, and I was lucky enough as well during my placements to go and visit some other places. So I managed to go up to Scotland and some other bases there and to Bristol as well. Once I finished the scheme, I moved on to my current role that I'm in now, um, and that is as a project planning manager for a submarine project. So what are my day to day responsibilities? So I am responsible for taking the requirements from the customer um, and pulling them together um, into things like schedules, mm -hmm. Um, I, I manage a small team of, of uh, project professionals as well and being able to be a leader has been a fantastic challenge um, and development opportunity for me. I also run many meetings and liaise with lots of stakeholders. I have to manage lots of project controls as part of my role. I've already mentioned the schedule, but risks, issues, opportunities, costs, all the sort of things you learn about as part of project management, I now manage and have to report on and deliver to as part of my project. It's been a real step up in terms of responsibility and accountability, but it's been fantastic. And I believe that the graduate scheme really set me up to take on the role I've, I've got now and to build that skill set. So where am I looking going forward? What are the next steps for me? So continue on into my role and continue developing in that area. So like Catherine said, gaining that experience and that exposure to project management. In terms of qualifications, I'm looking towards my project professional qualification, which is the next one. I was actually revising for that today, looking to take that qualification and that will tick the three main sort of PFQ, PMQ and PPQ. From that, I'm hoping to build that portfolio to take me towards chartership as that is a real aim for me to become a charter professional. I want to end just by saying that, as you can see, I've had a fantastic experience so far and there's lots of opportunities available. And just to remember that you do not need that engineering degree and you can you can join with a variety of degrees and that's a fantastic opportunity. So thank you for listening and I'll hand back over to Catherine. Thank you, Becky. So we thought we'd give an opportunity um, for some some questions now. So hopefully we've um, we, we've wet the appetite a little bit and it's great to see some questions come through. So I'll, I'll pick a couple off the chat, but please just raise your hand if you'd um, if you'd like to ask a question of us and um, myself and, and Gemma and, and Casper will see what we can do to answer them. Um, so let me, me pick one of the first ones that's come through and it's 
Is the application open for international students as well? And do you provide sponsorship? So the first and foremost, we are a defence based company, so all successful applicants will need to go through UK government security vetting and they will need to achieve FC clearance. Subject to this, um, they, they will be made an offer. We review um, individual applications on a, on a case by case basis um, with regards to sponsorship. We do offer a limited number of sponsorships, um, but again, this will be on a case by case, um, case by case review. Um, but it will. All, there is absolutely that criteria of being able to successfully get through UK government um, betting. Next question that I have um, is: it, If people have already applied, when will they hear about um, uh, the next steps in terms of online assessments? We are going through the CVs that are coming through now. Um, we've given it a couple of weeks to let people um, to, to, to now once it's open and to get the word out. So CVs will be screened. If you're successful, you will be um, uh, be sent the, the link and, and further details for those online assessments. The uh, and again, after you're if you're successful from that stage, we'll be planning to run the, um, the virtual assessment centres towards the end of October, November, December. And I'll just reiterate if we fill our full um, our full numbers this year and just um, to uh, give you an indication. Uh, I think it's it's between 30 and 40 we're looking for this year. And um, once we fill those numbers, that application process will close. Next question um, is what is the um, team culture at the project management team? So maybe Gemma, could I ask you to maybe expand on that one a little bit? Tell me a bit about the team that you work with and what and and, and yeah, what's life working with your integrated project team in Babcock? Yeah, of course. Thank you very much, uh, Lydia, for that question. So um, I work in a, in a project management team and, and the key, team culture is fantastic. We have a really good range of people within that team. So when I talk about my project management team, I don't just mean sort of myself and and sort of um, direct uh, employees supporting me. I also mean the sort of wider team as well. So people in um, sort of a reduction environment supporting as well. And the team culture is fantastic. You've got people from many different backgrounds that come in through an engineering route, um, a more industrialised route or a, a project route. And we all sort of support each other and help because we've all got different skills in different areas. So, for example, my skill set, like I've said, is, is in the project management side. But I work very closely with the engineers that support the project and they're sort of subject matter experts in, in the engineering on the sort of submarines and things we work on. So the team culture is really, really good and it's fantastic. You get that exposure and learning to, to lots of different areas. Thanks, Gemma. Um, next question we've had, um, does Babcock provide summer internships for students? Um, yes, absolutely, we do. Um, at the end of this presentation, we're going to show you um, a video about our early careers, which includes our apprenticeships and um, uh, some of our intern programmes. So if you go to that early careers uh, link that we've shown or go through our Babcock web page, you, sh you, uh, you should be able to find more details about that. Uh, Next question was, I'm currently pursuing a, an MSc. Oh, sorry, they're all coming in thick and fast now, it jumped around. There we go. I'm currently pursuing an MSc in project management um, and have experience of around eight years. Am I eligible to apply for the graduate scheme? Um, yes, but I'd also potentially encourage you to look at our current live vacancies within Babcock. We have a lot of opportunities. We have a broad order book in front of us. We're a growing business. So actually we have live um, vacancies today for project managers so it might actually be with your experience already and with your technical um, your MSc which will, will be giving you a fantastic amount of um, technical knowledge and understanding it might be that you're ready to apply directly for one of our assistant project manager roles or even project manager roles so I encourage you to go and look at our website to look at all of our vacancies and see if there's anything in there that's of interest because it might be that you can become as a direct entry in Whereas on our graduate scheme, um, it will be after those two years that you start as an assistant project manager. Uh, next question from um, from Jack. What support does Babcock offer for anyone that may be looking towards undertaking a master's degree uh, whilst on the graduate scheme? Again, these tend to be on um, a case by case basis in terms of um, further further education. 
Um, so we so we we would discuss that and then review that with you. I would say that we'll be keeping you very busy on that two year scheme of, of the graduate scheme, and we'll be also you know putting you through some of those additional qualifications. So part of us reviewing on this case by case ba basis would be also looking at your well being. Is a work you know is a workload appropriate? Have you got um, uh, have you got capacity to do further? But again, it will be um, uh, based on individual situations and what is the business case towards that matter master's degree um, and what is it going to, um, to to support you in your career development. I had a question on um, the the vetting process um, just to elaborate on, on that a little bit more. Um, vetting is conducted on all applicants regardless of uh, whether you are um, from an international location or whether a UK based myself and Gemma um, have all been through um, UK vetting. There's an application form that you have to fill in and uh, you have to put in put you know personal details and background and um, uh, addresses that you go through. Again if there's, a, if there's a specific question that you have I'd um, encourage you to to get in touch and we can uh, we can review on a case by case basis. Another question from Fran, is there an opportunity to select a location or preference um, or are candidates randomly um, across the UK? Uh, great question. So um, Gemma, as you probably heard, uh, the, the scheme, um, she worked predominantly out of, out of Plymouth, but had a couple of opportunities to, to work up in Bristol and Clyde. Um, we will be looking at uh, each of our sites have um, they, they vary in size so I talked about two of our dockyards so in those dockyards we have a lot more projects so um, there will be um, a number of placements that are based in in Plymouth in Marseille but then other ones around around the UK we will look to um, understand individual preferences and, and where you're where you're currently based and if your flexibility in terms of um, of location to see uh, if, if we can find a match but what I would say is during the two years, I really encourage everyone to make the most of the opportunities, if they can, uh, to get around all of our, our, our sites and take different placements on. Appreciate, again, that might change if um, for we, we have some of our graduates who um, who are uh, who have caring responsibilities. So we've we've put them in placements in one location, but on a couple of different projects within the site, whether that be um, an infrastructure project and then a strategic project and then um, uh, a HR project, for example. So there is um, opportunities uh, to, to review that. Um, and that's just. Probably the question hasn't come up yet, but um, I'm anticipating it is um, agile working. Do we um, do we embrace agile working? Absolutely. And actually, it's something that um, COVID has helped us to accelerate within Babcock. Um, we uh, we are we look at agile, flexible working. Um, and, and again, it's about uh, what are the um, working with your line manager to understand what is the, the working pattern that works both for you as an individual and then also for um, for in Babcock, how we ensure that we can um, meet our, uh, our customer requirements and the project requirements. Quite a lot of our project teams now will do um, a couple of days in in the office and then a couple of days um, working from home. But again, that really varies. One of the things you probably picked up on is the breadth of our portfolio. So there's no one answer to this question and it will partly depend on the projects um, that you're involved on. But we're absolutely committed to being an agile and flexible um, employer. I'm going to take one more question and then we'll um we'll I'll pass on to Casper and then also there'll be some more opportunities for um for questions at the end. Um one around I've just started my post um graduate in, in project management, expect to graduate by September. When's the right time to apply? Um I suggest that that's probably next year. Um, if you'll be if you'll be finishing your education in um, September uh, oh actually so if you're finishing your education in September 23 I would apply now because we um, we take on board our, our graduates will start in the business in September 23 so yeah apply now if you didn't uh, finish until mm -hmm. 24 I would suggest apply this time next year. Casper should we um should we cover a little bit more of the presentation and then come back to some more of these great questions? Yeah sorry I was I was lost there in listening to all the great questions that were coming through, but yeah, I guess we should uh, plow on with the rest of the content that we've got. So let's let's do that right now. So 
Um, some of you will be aware of this. Um, APM is a professional body and membership organisation. And for those of you who are at university right now, um, I hope that you're a student member already because that will give you access to all of the things that you can see in bold here. So the soft copies of lots of guidance that we have and insights. You can have access to uh, virtual networks as well, like APM Community. Um, we're running a lot of um, on campus and virtual university events right now. And uh, for student members, we're doing kind of multi site um, student member networking events, which also have an employability spin on them as well. So these are exclusively for student members at university. You can go along to a university, meet other students from universities in the region, listen to a panel discussion from employers about employability skills, as in what are we looking for um, for people applying for our roles? And then after that, um, that will turn into a networking event with more employer stands and some food, of course. So it's that kind of thing um, that makes student membership worthwhile. For those of you who have a bit more experience under your belt, you might find that our associate membership level is a better fit for you. Um, and right now, because we're 50, 50 this year, and you can see a little 50 on the slide there, um, our associate membership is 50% off. You see the link there, and that associate membership will give you access to our e-learning platform um, called APM Learning, and also our mentoring program as well. Mm. So, so we heard earlier from Catherine that Babcock has an internal mentoring program. It's a great way to develop yourself in different ways. APM has a mentoring program and you as an associate member can join that program as a mentor or mentee or a reverse mentor. So that's something that's worth considering if you have that bit of experience already, like in the example question that we had earlier on. So membership is is a journey. Student membership is not the destination, clearly. That's that's your onboarding point. And then you'll go through the different membership levels. And for the last two at the bottom, you'll you'll have designatory letters. So MAPM and FAPM, as we call them. Um, Catherine's got uh, the FAPM um, as well as CHPP. So that's what those uh, letters mean as part of your membership progression and recognition across the organisation that you work for and the wider profession. So I'm not going to talk too much about the qualifications that we offer because you've already heard about that. But to give it a bit of context, you will find that some people um, take the project management qualification when they're on a graduate scheme, like like we've heard Gemma did at Babcock. Some people would take the fundamentals qualification before they embark on a graduate scheme. Some would wait until they join a scheme to do it. There's no requirement to start with fundamentals to do management. There's no requirement to have management to do professional, so it's a very inclusive approach to qualifications. This is the moment where I say if you've built your network as much as you can and you want to do something else, then by all means get the project fundamentals qualification, but I can't overestimate the importance of going to events like this, networking after the event, talking to lots of people and making informed choices, and that's worth more than a qualification right now. Um, but if you've done all that already, by all means, take the PFQ. That's an online examination. It doesn't require, it doesn't presuppose any existing project management knowledge. It's available through the year, online, on your own device, wherever you want. And I can say that because I sat it at home um, a couple of months ago. So it's it's a very user friendly way to, to show that you understand the key concepts. And then again, we've got Catherine, who is a CHPP. Uh, this is something that's quite quite a, a recent development really. It's only been going for about four years, um, but it shows the maturity of the project profession, particularly against some of those other better established professions that have been going for a hundred and something years, like you know, chartered engineer and chartered accountant and chartered surveyor. So being able to say that you're a chartered project professional is part of the maturing of, of the broader profession. And it's fantastic to see that one of our corporate partners, Babcock, is very supportive of taking people all the way through from day one through to CHPP. So I mentioned that networking is a very important aspect of, of the stage that you're at now, and actually it's never not important. So I network, Catherine networks, students network, everybody needs to network as part of their continuing professional development. No matter where you are in the UK, there will be an APM branch where you can network with your peers, um, and people perhaps one or two stages ahead so that you can keep on doing that research about different roles um, and hopefully uh, realise that this is the role that you'd like to apply for. So networking is key, key, key to what you're doing right now. 
So that was a very brief hop, skip and a jump through some of the ways that APM supports Babcock, supports other organisations um, through that professional development that makes the project profession what it is right now. Um, so we have another opportunity um, for some Q&A for those of you who are reflectors like me um, and couldn't think of it straight away. Um, yeah, so what other questions have we got? And I can't see them. So Becky or or um, anyone else, if you'd like to read them out, that would be fab. Perhaps Catherine, if you could. And you're on mute at the moment. There we go. I, I knew I'd manage it at some point. Um, we have one about um, uh, age limit. No, there is no age limit for um, applications for our graduate scheme. And um, we have a number of mature students um, already uh, um, on our current graduate scheme. So age isn't isn't a barrier. This is about um, embarking on a career in project management, providing um, you meet, you know, you have that degree, that uh, bachelor's degree. And as I talked about in the presentation, that you have um, some of those uh, behaviours and um, skills that we're looking to, to build on. A um, couple of the questions around um, around placements to say just encourage you to go and look at our early career scheme if you're looking for um, placement opportunities, internships that would be through our early, early careers pages. This uh, graduate scheme is, uh, as it says on the box, it's for those who have actually got um, gone through their degree. If you're if you're in your final year now, now is the time to apply if you want to start in September 23 with us. A uh, couple of other um, questions. There was um, there was one about would you see that? I think if I just paraphrase, it was about um, shipbuilding, and you know that can take a number of years to um, to to build a ship. Um, so just a little bit about that. When, when I mentioned it before, you you may step into one of our projects when it's mid when it's mid its life cycle. So in, in that uh, shipbuilding example, um, it might be that it's still in uh, the, the design phase and you would join it at that point and you would do that placement for six months and you would get just an insight into the um, in, into build, for example, of some of our type 31 um, is, is a project that we're um, on with at the moment. Um, so you, you will get to go and join that. If that is a particular, is one of the benefits of the scheme, as I said, six months placement, so you'll do a minimum of four, over the two years is you get to get around Babcock and see which things about Babcock really excite you and where you might want to go back and do your your full time um, substantive role for Gemma that was in submarines I say for others it might be going to join um, the marine shipbuilding program it might be joining our civil nuclear business and to maybe answer um, the second part of a question um, we in Cavendish nuclear we support um, the UK uh, nuclear program so there are um, operational um, um, nuclear sites in the UK. There are also a number of sites that are in the decommissioning phase. And what we're, we're doing in Cavendish Nuclear is helping to support the customers, um, such as uh, Magnox and the nu Nuclear Decommissioning Authority, to, to put those sites into a, um, a safe and um, uh, kind of decommission them in a safe and um, way for, for the future. So that's another, another aspect of the work that we do in Cavendish. We're also involved in Hinkley. Um, Hinkley C new build and the Sizewell new build program. Gemma, are there any other questions that you wanted to pick up off the list? Or no, I just think for a couple of people asking about internship positions, I think Catherine's mentioned, but we um, Babcock offers sort of summer internships as well. So if you're in the middle of your degree, you can um, do a summer internship, or I think even an industrial year. Um, so I believe that will be available to look at on the website. But as we've said, if you're looking to do the graduate scheme, that would be post um, you completing your degree. Although I will say that, um, as someone asked earlier, you can't. A lot of people won't graduate until say late summer, but you not, might need to apply now. That's fine. Lots of people um, in the year that I joined, um, you know, graduate had already had their job and then graduated, which is fantastic to be in that position. Um, so as long as you're finishing your degree by September, um, that's that's there's there's no no worries there. Um, I think that's just have a quick look. I think that's all of them. Could I ask a question there, just just from that internship perspective to, to both of you? Um, and you may not know the answer to this, but but for those people who are doing their homework here, who aren't in the final year of a degree, but just want to understand a bit more and they may be in a really good place to go for an internship. Does that internship give you an advantage, if you like, when you're applying for a graduate scheme the following year or doesn't it work like that? 
an internship um it, it can do uh yes uh, so we have we have um some of our interns who've then moved straight onto the graduate scheme um because it's been a right fit for back you know they've been a, a right fit for our organization and actually we've really liked them as well so they've moved um onto our graduate scheme uh slightly less um vacancies in terms of internships but um but absolutely we do run them Great, just to, to say though that you know that it is fantastic to get that out there but if you don't have you know you don't manage to do one i i applied without doing you know um an internship or, or a summer placement and it was fantastic and i still got all the support um moving into my to my graduate scheme so although it's fantastic to hear people are looking early if you do decide to wait till you're graduated that that's fine too yeah brilliant thank you Gemma that, let me build on that even some even more so when I talk about I'm looking for your um, leadership um, experience and your ability to plan that could be from your um, extracurricular activities it might be that you've been involved in extracurricular clubs it might have been that you have done things like um, you know scouting or guiding it might have been that uh, you were involved in a sports club all of those experiences will have given you some leadership skills and it's that that you know we're looking to build on and no doubt stuff that you've done as part of your your degree or even um, part-time jobs etc so you don't have to have experience working as a project manager it's about those skills I talked about ability um, to, to plan to organize to to lead teams to um, effectively communicate uh, to interpret data that's kind of I'm looking for examples of that when we're looking to um, to recruit our, our graduates Another um, question that's come in. Uh, lots on, yeah, there's lots coming in on um, on internships. Um, as I say, uh, I, I can see there's lots lots of interest in that. So please ha please have a go to our early careers page. Um, but also it might be that that we're just wetting your appetite and that you apply. If not this year, it might be that you um, you apply in in the uh, in the future. Is there any other any other questions or anything around APM or um, that that Casper has said? I'm really happy to um, ask them. Hopefully, we've covered um, uh, uh, most of the questions that have come through. One um, one piece I would just say, um, so it's a two year graduate program. There is a substantive permanent contract at the end of that. I know in some um, organisations it will be a two year contract. You will receive a permanent contract with Babcock and once you've done the two year scheme, we'll be looking to, um, uh, to, to match you to that substantive role. And just a great question that's come in towards the end there. Do I have to specify my location when applying? Um, no, you don't. We will, uh, successful applicants, we will we will work with you. I will say that, you know, as I said, we do have hubs and some of that um, uh, came through on the map that I showed you. So we do have um, hubs in particular locations, Plymouth being one, Bristol, Rosyth, uh, Warrington, uh, I've, I've missed a few in that in that list and some of those take more placement offer more placements than others and that's a little bit in the nature of where our work is based can i just answer I one we'll, uh, oh can i just answer one more that i think hasn't been covered um someone said jack i think said if someone was successful when would the job offer likely be um a dependent on on when you apply um for i can just give my example of what could happen to me but obviously it's based on on the interviewing and um at what point you apply but i applied think probably this sort of as it opened um, and did sort of my interviews and stuff in the new year and I heard quite shortly after which was lovely because then I was able to sort of enjoy my summer knowing that I was going to join Babcock in sort of August September time so the earlier you apply sort of the the earlier you can find out so and also the roles won't be filled so my advice would be um, that it's completely dependent but if you get in early you're, you're more likely to find out early. Thank you, Gemma. Um, so we'll just encourage you if, if this hopefully this presentation has um, has uh, given you a taste of what we do at Babcock and an interest. Please go to the application and, uh, and apply now. Uh, and I hopefully look forward to meeting you as part of our assessment centres and, and hopefully as part of our, our cohort in September 23. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to Casper for hosting us in APM. 
Um, we, we have a fantastic relationship with APM as a corporate partner. We work really closely with them. So it's been great to be able to give this presentation today. Um, I want to leave you with a final video, which is of all of our, uh, um, our early careers um, recruitment campaign for, uh, for 2023. And again, these are actual graduates and apprentices that work in our business today. Thank you, everyone. At Babcock, we're creating a safe, secure world together. When people ask, what do you do? Wouldn't you love to tell them you work to make the world a better place? That's what I do. That's what I do. That's what I do. That's what I do. Every day at Babcock. We're an international defence and security company. With sites all around the UK. That does loads of exciting and important things to make the world safer and more secure. We defend nations save lives and protect communities around the globe and if you join us as an apprentice graduate or intern that's what you'll be doing too so what does it take to work here you definitely need to be interested in business engineering or science and technology beyond that you just need to be you Babcock's a really welcoming and supportive place to work there's a healthy balance of work and play anyone can thrive here and everyone gets to make a big impact not just on our own future but everyone's everywhere Work for the world you want to live in. Work to create a safe and secure world together. Thanks very much from me as well. Um, it's been a delight having you uh, join us. And Catherine, thanks very much for some absolutely fantastic insights into Babcock and Gemma as well. There's nothing like a relatable graduate story to enthuse people about making applications. So um, if you do have questions um, after the event, I'm sure you can find us on LinkedIn. Um, do go to the Early Careers website in Babcock and uh, I wish you all the success uh, you seek in uh, working for this great organisation and APM corporate partner. But for now, thank you and have a great afternoon. Thanks all. Bye now.